Workmen were mending the road near the level crossing. They sectioned off part of it with red and white cones, and a steamroller chuffered importantly. His name was George. He was a most unpleasant steamroller. Railways are no good, he grumbled. Turn them into roads. Nonsense, said Daisy one day. No one could reach the villages in the valley without our railway. I'd build a road along your old tracks, said George. Nothing to it. My mates have done it all over the place. Daisy told Percy and Toby what George had said. Toby was worried because he knew George was right. The fat controller wouldn't allow it, he said. But he wasn't convinced. Daisy was reassured, but she was careful to do nothing to upset George, just in case. Then something happened which made them forget all their worries. Daisy was at the platform when the station master came to talk to her driver. He had a letter in his hand. Thomas is coming back next week, he said. The engines were delighted, and so, of course, were Annie and Clara. The fat controller is holding a welcome home celebration at the junction, Daisy told George. Lot of nonsense, he snorted. Makes no difference. Your railway will be a road before long. You'll see. At last, everything was ready. The engines and coaches were to go to the junction, and Daisy was to come last with a special train carrying the station masters, Mr. and Mrs. Kindly, and other important people. Daisy set off happily from the top station. She stopped at the station near the level crossing for her last passengers. There was no sign of George, but some red and white cones lay nearby. Two of them were even inside the crossing gates. The guard blew his whistle. <coughs> Tooted Daisy. Away we go! And she rattled towards the level crossing. As she did so, a gust of wind blew a cone towards her. It disappeared beneath Daisy's wheels. Ouch! She screamed and stopped. The guard removed the cone, which was now looking very battered. Grrr, groaned Daisy, trying to move. Help! I'm stuck. The driver got down to look. That cone has damaged your brakes, he told her. They've jammed hard on. Oh no! wailed Daisy. Now the passengers won't get to Thomas's welcome in time. Why can't that stupid George clear his rubbish up properly? I bet he did it on purpose. Can't be helped, Daisy, said her driver. We'll do what we can. A fitter came, and the three men worked hard while Daisy stood and fretted. We're going to miss Thomas, I know we are, she fumed. At last the job was done, and Daisy set off with a roar. As they came near the junction, Daisy could see a large crowd on the platform. Suddenly she heard a cheer. Oh dear, she groaned, we're too late. No, we're not, said her driver. Thomas isn't here yet. It's us they're cheering. Just then, the signal arm dropped, and a familiar whistle sounded in the distance. Thomas came into the station. He looked tired, but he was smiling broadly. He carried the plaque which the National Railway Museum had given him. Welcome home, Thomas, said the fat controller. We are all proud of you and delighted to see you safely back, especially Annie and Clarabelle. Everyone laughed and the fat controller held up his hand. Three cheers, he called, for Thomas, our famous tank engine. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! 